Today we're going to have a look at a pen that came in a white box. What white box? A white box. Okay, sleeve goes out, then you have this. Rouge et noir. Alright, Rouge et noir, Mont Blanc, special edition pen. This is not the fancy ebonite edition that was super limited, it's just the uh, special edition. So usually that means that Mont Blanc will produce a certain amount and then they will just stop. Um, Lent to me by Appelbaum Pennen. So thank you, Appelbaum Pennen. This will not be a giveaway, just before anyone asks. Um, here you go. Box opens up. So another cardboard thing. So now we have two cardboard things. Now we have a box and a very extensive uh, sort of user guide, um, which I, I, I've enjoyed. I mean, it's it's nicely uh, colored and all that. And the box, and in the box, the box flaps open is a little slot, and in that slot is the pen. Now there are two versions of this, rouge et noir, so there's a black one and there is a coral one, and this is the coral one. Okay, so it's a very nice color. It actually doesn't match the red on the box particularly well, but that's okay. Rouge et noir, collection, kind of reminiscent of the old Mont Blanc stuff. And you can see that in some parts of the design. I think Mont Blanc has done a very nice job on these. Um, and there are some things I don't really like about them so much either. So let's cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Then I'll do a writing sample. And I'll just leave. Okay, let's start at the top of the pen. Finial, you of course have the white snowflake slash peak of the Mont Blanc slash star slash Rorschach type spot. Um, it's vintage looking, it's big, uh, and they really went for that vintage thing there. And then you have the clip, the clip is a snake, the snake rotates around the uh, cap, and the snake has green eyes. On the uh, limited edition, the black ebonite version actually has two rubies for eyes, uh, which is uh, kind of neat. And then you have the, uh, the Mont Blanc uh, logo, you can see that right there, it's also in a vintage style with the engraving. Uh, I, I do like that. And then you have the barrel uh, and the, the piston turning knob because it is a piston filler. The cap unscrews, then you have a small metal section, matte chrome type section, and then you have the nib, in this case a broad nib. Uh, the uh, imprint on there in gold is actually a, a snake, so the head of a snake, and I think that's a very neat continuation of the theme. On the nib is Mont Blanc 14 karat AU585, and then I think that's uh, supposed to be some uh, some hallmark, but I, I've never really understood that. Have to look into it. And then we have a little uh, a, a couple of threads there. All right, piston filled pen, so no cartridges, no converters, just the built-in piston. Oh, and I haven't really shown you the the feed. Some people really like to see the feed. Nice shape, I think. Also reminds me a bit of the belly of a snake, so they did well in that. Um, clip, if you're interested, clip is pretty stiff but usable. Pen cannot really be posted. This is not really fitting on there. And that's it. So, what do I like about it, what do I not like about it? First of all, how's it write? Writes pretty well. Very nice nib. In most shops you find them in fine and medium. A couple of shops also offer the broad nibs. Uh, this is the broad nib and it's very nice. It writes really nicely. I really enjoy that. So that's very nice. I like the color. The color, the orange, it works. It is a vintage type color and especially the top of the cap, uh, you could confuse that for a vintage Mobla. Even with the little uh, ridge there, sort of the, the, the relief. It works, it works, it, it's it's neat, it's neat looking. And the snake, I'm not a particularly big fan of snake, I mean that snakes don't do anything for me, but there are people who are obsessed with snakes. For those kinds of people, this would be very nice. And I mean, the fact that there's little green eyes in this one and red eyes in the black one, I mean, that, that is cool. It's a cool detail. And it works. So, I, I, I mean, I, I do like that. I think they, they did a, a nice job there. Little vintage logo, it looks cool, the color is cool, all that is neat. Now, another thing I'd like to point out is that it's a pretty thin pen, but even though it is a thin pen, and I'll come back to that in a second, it's surprisingly heavy. I'm assuming it's metal that was lacquered because this does not feel like a resin pen. It has a lot more weight to it than you may expect on the base of the looks of it. And that's cool, because such a, a narrow, thin, little slim pen could be very, very light and feel a bit underwhelming, I suppose. 
but in this case I really think it has a nice bit of weight. So I like the nib, I like the colour, I like some of the details, I like the way it feels, but what do I not like? Well, it is very thin, and of course that's always an, not entirely fair criticism. Some people like thin pens, and of course if you don't like a thin pen you shouldn't buy it. But it is thin, it is narrow, and I really think this is a bit of a ladies pen. It's very slim, um, it's not that long, uh, so you know, this would look great in a purse. Uh, and I think for small feminine hands this is great, but once your hands get a bit bigger, I mean, I can hardly put my fingers anywhere there. So that, that to me, doesn't really work so well. But as I said, it's not entirely fair because, I mean, it's just the way the pen was designed and I, you know, if you don't like it, don't get it. What I don't care for so much though, and that is a more objective issue, I would say, is the placement of these threads. Uh, it's nice that they're there. They are a little sharp, it is metal. Uh, it's nice that they're not in the back because you don't really touch them like this, so that's neat. You don't actually have any issues with touching a sharp, sharp threads. But the problem is, if you dip this into a bottle of ink, you're going to get ink on there. Unless you really do this extremely carefully so that only the nib and feet are submerged and then you operate the piston turning knob. But I've not really been able to do it. It's hard. So for me, it's, it's really kind of poor placement. And the issue is, it's not the only pen that does it. Franklin Christoph pens all have threads at the front of the section too, but those are very broad, wide threads. You just take a tissue and you wipe it and all the ink is gone. But these are very fine threads. You can see that. Look at how close together they are. Very, very fine. Uh, it's hard to even put, well, to put my nail between it. I can do that, but I mean that just gives you an, an idea of how fine those threads are and cleaning the ink out of that is actually surprisingly difficult you need to start working with wet tissues and all that so if you're on the road now does anyone refill a piston filler on the road it can happen if you're at work or whatever you also need to get a tissue you need to wetten it you need to do all kinds of stuff to it uh, to, to really clean those threads unless as i said you are very 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 steady hand and you can just submerge that that uh, nib, I suppose it's possible, but it just makes it a little bit more cumbersome to fill, and I do think that's a bit of an issue. Final thing, let's discuss the price. They go for about 760 euros here, so a quarter of a thousand euros, and uh, that is substantial. That's a substantial cost for a small, fairly slim pen. Yes, it has a 14 karat gold nib, yes, it's a piston filler, yes, it has some type of metal in the body, I think, for the weight. Um, but that is quite a lot and I understand it's a special edition but it's a lot of money I think for what you get given that it's not that big a pen also there's no ink window so although it's a piston failure you have no idea how much ink you have left it's a blind guess so there are some things that would have been nice if this would be a 149 size pen at that price I think it would be stellar I think it would blow a lot of competition out of the water but it's not it's a small, slim pen, and a lot of money. So, it's not for everyone. I can see that this would appeal to certain people. If you like snakes, if you like the sort of vintage look, uh, if you're looking for a slim pen that you can easily carry around, and that is a piston filler, because take the Mont Blanc 144. Yeah, that's the, um, the classic. Nice pen, also slim, but cartridge converter. So. It's nice that they actually put a piston in. I like a lot of the stuff that's going on, but it is a significant cost. So whether that's worth it or not, that really depends on you, I think. It's not that the quality isn't there. It's just a high price for, for what it is. Okay, having said all of that, you may want to know more. There are dimensions as well as high resolution pictures on the website, sbrebrown.com. Pictures is always taken by Gourmet Pens. Um, we should see how the pen writes. That's coming up next. Hope this was useful so far. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Alright, so here we go with the Mont Blanc. 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 That's an NC combination. Rouge. Et noir. The nib is a broad. And the ink is some blue, and I just don't remember which one.
The nib is very smooth, very pleasant. I really enjoy it. Uh, you definitely notice that slight stubbiness that a lot of the broader Mont Blanc nibs have. I really like it. Very, very smooth, very good ink flow. Not the wettest writer in the world, but definitely wet enough. Line variation, where you see this natural line variation due to the shape of the nib, that's all equal pressure. It is a gold nib, it is a springier gold nib, so with a bit of care, you can definitely squeeze out some extra line variation. Reverse writing, always a bit difficult with a, a stubby nib. Uh, because it's, you know, it's kind of flattened and not round like most uh, nibs are. Sorry for the terrible drawing. Um, if I see this back in here, I think, why did I write these weird characters? But anyway, <clears throat> um, so not the greatest pen for reverse writing, uh, but apart from that, I think it's a, a really neat little pen. So, a kind thank you to Applebaum Penner for lending me the pen. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful. And I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. Rouge et noir. That has sort of a rhythm to it, Lord Windermere. But we can turn that into a song. Let's see. Rouge et noir. 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 I think it'll be a hit. Betcha.